Greetings everyone. We're going to study how to build a three-dimensional daisy design in Cabri 3D. This is a fairly complex uh, construction. So what I recommend is if you haven't uh, studied the earlier uh, and simpler construction in two dimension called the daisy design using Geometry Sketchpad, I recommend that you study that first. And what we're going to learn to do is how to do this in 3D. Uh, and when we are done, it's going to look something like this, where the circles making up the daisy uh, stretch into the third dimension and create some really fabulous patterns uh, that you see here. And here is a top view, bird's eye view on the whole thing. Uh, but what's happening is the individual circles are rotating and they are creating the daisy and then they are creating uh, some other patterns. Alrighty, uh, so I hope this is clear and let me just give you another view of this. I'm going to rotate this object a little bit further so you can see it uh, from different angles. Uh, as you look at this carefully, you're going to notice that the circles of the daisy uh, become perpendicular to the plane uh, of the original daisy and then they collapse and uh, they repeat that pattern. Alrighty, so uh, in order to do this you need to have a Cabri 3D uh, available. Cabri 3D available uh, and uh, in order to do that, and let me just pause this uh, a little bit and we'll use this as a reference. So start a new uh, page and uh, the way we start is uh, not uh, very unsimilar to the daisy design we have started uh, doing uh, in Geometry Sketchpad. We start with a circle on a plane. So you find your circle tool. And remember in Cabri, uh, uh, if you lose uh, track of what the tools does, you can always go to the tool help and it will tell you how to create your uh, circle, etc. You need to acknowledge the plane. You need to center the circle, and when you open your arm, this is where uh, the circle is going to uh, end. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, movable point on the circle where the uh, rotating circles are going to be uh, originating from. Okay? So what I recommend we do is let's create a plane through the origin, through the uh, top point of this vector, and to the point that controls the radius of the circle. Uh, this way, what we can do is we can create a circle that is going to live on this plane, centered at the origin and ending up at the top of this vector. And you will notice that if I place a point here, then what I can create is I can create a plane that is moving in a manner uh, that is controlled by this point. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to create a plane that goes through this point, the origin, and then that point. And observe when I animate this point, and remember in Cabri 3D animations are context dependent. You click on the point that is traveling and then you give it some speed. I recommend don't give it too much of a speed, it becomes confusing. You're going to notice that the plane is going to now uh, rotate. And this is where our, our circles are going to be centered. Uh, what I recommend at this point is maybe let us make the original circle a little bit smaller so that our rotating circles will um, fit nicely. I'll also color. I'm now uh, control clicking on that circle. I'm going to change the color of that circle so we don't confuse it with the rotating circles. So maybe I'll make that green. I'll make this other one green. Just to remind me that these are controlling circles. These are not the circles that are going to be at the end of the day uh, creating the daisy. Okay, so uh, we are almost there. So now I need to create my circles. Uh, so here's the first circle. Remember, a circle needs a plane to live on. So it lives on this rotating plane. 
it is centered at this point and then ends at the origin okay so let's check that this works uh, when you press the animation you're going to notice that this circle is moving around the original uh, plane sometimes it is perpendicular to it sometimes it coincides with it and you'll see in a minute at special instances uh, this will uh, actually be the guiding circle of the daisy design so i'm gonna uh, uh, hide the uh, so let me hide the plane here let me hide the plane here so we can see better what we're doing okay uh, so this is the plane that we want uh, sorry this is the circle that we want to keep rotating and remember when uh, this circle is right on the original plane this is gonna feel a lot like the daisy design but when later it moves uh, in a manner that is perpendicular to the plane, etc., it's going to spin all the other circles we are about to create in a second. Okay? So uh, let's actually do this uh, like uh, this. Uh, I'm going to create an axis of rotation for this circle. So I go to my perpendicular tool, I click on the plane, and I make it uh, go through the origin. And then uh, I will select, uh, I, I will create a measurement here via the calculator. So I'm going to write here uh, 30 degrees. So you type 30, and then when you write the words DEG, it understands the 30 degrees. Okay. And this is going to be uh, helpful to us in a second when we are doing a rotation around this axis of rotation. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the transformation menu and take a rotation option. And a rotation needs an axis of rotation in 3D, a angle of rotation, and then an object that's going to be rotated. And observe, now we created a second circle, 30 degree rotation around the axis. And I keep repeating this until I weave my pattern. Axis, angle, next circle axis angle next circle axis angle next circle etc and you're going to notice when you have created 12 of these uh, you will have weaved the uh, three-dimensional daisy pattern that you're seeing here uh, i just made a mistake let me do that again i go to my rotate tool the axis of rotation, the angle of rotation, and then the circle. Uh, again, axis, angle, circle, axis, angle, circle. We're almost there. Axis, angle, circle. Uh, axis, angle, circle. I believe I have only a few left axis angle circle that might be actually it okay now notice you have a few controls here uh, this is the original circle uh, the point on the circle that is able to rotate uh, you could decide if you want to give this a spin to or not this is the original point on the circle that decides on the size I don't recommend you make it much bigger so make it maybe constrained in this uh, square region here. Uh, this is the point that sort of drives this animation. We already created a uh, control. Uh, we already created an animation for that, so you don't need anything else for that. So at this point, I recommend you start hiding things. Uh, so let's hide this uh, line. Let's hide uh, this point uh, once you decided on the uh, size you don't need that anymore let's uh, hide this uh, circle this control point okay uh, all these vectors uh, probably should also be hidden uh, I'm hiding each of these individually this vector should also be hidden this circle should be hidden and then uh, we have a point here that is driving the whole thing once you like its speed, which I recommend, don't make it too, too fast. 
maybe I'm gonna make it 0.5 centimeters per second uh, I'm gonna hide that and I'm gonna hide this value here when you start the animation you're going to notice that your circles are becoming perpendicular to the original plane then they're collapsing on top of it and this way you're getting the daisy design and then some other things uh, it might be beneficial to hide this uh, plane but what I realize when you do that uh, it becomes very hard to see that this is three-dimensional so I'm gonna just change the surface uh, maybe color a little bit and make it uh, with some dots etc uh, so that it doesn't distract us too much uh, I always find the background to be dark uh, helps visibility okay so you're going to notice here is our uh, pattern that is uh, evolving from a two-dimensional daisy design into a three-dimensional version of that this is a fairly complex construction if all of this did not make sense to you uh, all at once do not be frustrated I would consider this to be actually one of the harder uh, constructions that we're going to uh, study so you may want to watch the video a few times and pick up the clues from that uh, to figure out but the main idea is to create a circle that is able to move perpendicular uh, to the original uh, plane and then collapse on top of it so you need it to somehow rotate become perpendicular then collapse back on the original plane okay so I hope this makes sense uh, this would make a fun uh, logo and uh, some fun thing to show to your classmates uh, I hope you enjoyed all the best take care